Welcome to video three. In this video, we'll be exploring the magic of UX Pin Merge. We'll get to see how React components like the MUI components are handled in UX Pin when using Merge. If you're already familiar with MUI 5 components, then you'll be quite familiar with the names and properties that we'll come across in this video. If you're not familiar with MUI 5, don't worry, we'll be having a brief look at how we can jump over to the documentation from UXPIN so that you can familiarize yourself with the component and how it's built for React. Now, I'm personally someone who doesn't use MUI much in my own work, but I am familiar with design systems, so just know that we're in this together. Let's have a look at MUI's page that lists all their components. These are all building blocks created by MUI that help us developers create user interfaces quickly. These are all very common and familiar web patterns that we see all over the internet ourselves. So we can see this card, we can see pagination, menu, tabs, all very familiar components. Using this huge library of building blocks, we can create something that is uniquely ours. For us, thanks to UXPIN Merge, we can use these very building blocks directly in UXPIN. All of these components that we see on this page are the exact same components that we see in the design systems library over here. Everything here is pulled directly from MUI, code and all. So these are not just pre-built visual components, but actual MUI React components that really work. So for example, if we come back up here, this card right here is the exact same card that we've been playing with this whole time in UX Pin. Now, because we're playing with MUI React components here in UX Pin, we can utilize MUI's documentation to check out the different React props and play by their rules. So let's pick up where we left off in the last video and click on the card component in our canvas and make sure it is highlighted with that orange outline. And we were just talking about this section right here, which tells us more about the MUI component that we've selected. As you might remember, we can also click on this icon on the bottom right hand corner and the documentation for MUI will pop up. Scrolling down a little bit, you'll find this props heading. Now I've got the table view selected. So if it looks different to you, you can head on to the top right here and select this icon. And we can see four props listed on the website. There's children, classes, raised, and SX. These are the MUI card components React props. So if you're familiar with using MUI components in React, these will look super familiar to you. Now these props are what changes the look and feel of this particular card component. And here we can see the name, the type, the default value, and a short description. Now, if we head back to UX pin, where we have our card component selected, we can see those four props right here. There's children, classes, raised, and all the way at the bottom, SX. But what about these? There's elevation, variant, and square. Let's hop back to the docs and come down here. It says the props of the paper component are also available in card. So let's click through to that. And here we see our missing three props. There's elevation, square, and variant. So if you're ever confused as to why a component doesn't have a certain prop in the docs, be sure to check the small text to see if it shares a prop with another component. Now, one more thing that's really cool is that UX pin merge, when you hover over the prop, it will actually give you the short description. So here it says children, the content of the component. And if we come back here to the card page, we'll see the content of the component. And it's the same for classes as well. So let's try and remember override or extend the styles applied to the component. And over here it says override or extend the styles applied to the component. So that's pretty cool. So now let's play around with the card components props to see UX pin magic in action. So first we have this children. This is what we would like to assign as the children for this element. However, there is a warning here. It says this element contains another component from code and adding text will remove the nested component. So that's not ideal. In fact, if we put anything in here, let's say hello world, 
all the contents disappear. So let's undo that and we'll leave the children alone for this element. Next up, we have classes. Now this is where we can assign CSS classes to this element and override any that come with the MUI component. Now we won't be doing this because we want to take full advantage of these ready-made React components. Next up, we have raised. Now this simply lets us give a little shadow or no shadow to the card. Next up, we've got elevation. Now it says here the shadow depth of paper surface and it and it accepts values between zero and 16. Now this actually changes how strong the shadow is. So if we put 16, we've got a really strong shadow. And if we do two, it's something that's a lot more subtle. Next up, there's variant. Now this just lets us choose if we want the elevation variant, which has the shadow, or if we want the outline variant, which is just an outline with no shadow. And next we've got square. And for this one, we'll zoom in a little bit. And this one lets us choose whether this, the corners are squared or if the corners are rounded. And finally, SX allows us to override props or styles. So here we can apply CSS styling using JSON. Um, the key should be the CSS property and the value is the property value. So for example, background color is green. And we can see here that the entire card's background is turned to green, just as we would expect it to. But just like before, we want to take full advantage of these already designed React components. So we'll just remove the JSON and I can do that by pressing this X or pressing this back to default button. Okay. So let's make this design interactive. So I've got a button here, so let's make it clickable. You'll remember from the last video that the button interacted or reacted when we clicked on it based on where the cursor was, but now let's make it do something. Let's make it open something. So let's head on over here and search for a dialog. We'll use dialog here and we'll just drag it down here. Now by default, the MUI dialog component will fill the space of a prototype, but for ease, we'll just place it directly below for now. And you'll actually see this in action when we load up the prototype later. Now the important prop that I want to point out here is this one, the open prop. Now this determines whether the dialog is showing or if it's not showing. And we can see this in action if we click between the two. So for now, we'll give it the default of true. Now let's select this button component and I'll be using the command click method and let's play around with some of these props to make it look like what we want. Now, if you've forgotten what a prop does, remember you can hover over it or open up the MUI documentation. So first let's change the text from share to click me and I'll do this in the children prop. So I'll do click me. Now we can edit the children prop this time because the only child of a button is the text content within it. And we'll come down here and change this to success. Now these are all uh, MUI color schemes. So we like success, so let's choose success. And for full width, I will make it full width, true. And size will make it big. So I like a big chunky button. Now, I also want to add an icon to the left of Click Me. And this is something I have actually discovered just in the last few days. And um, we can actually pass an icon component into the button component as a prop. So I'll show you what I mean. So first I will create, I'll create an icon component and I'll just put it here for now. So this is an icon component. And then I'll click on the button and I'll come here to start icon. And here there's these crosshairs and I can actually select a merge component from the library or canvas to pass its JSX code in as a prop. So I will select this icon over here and we can see that it pops up right here in the button and it's being passed in as JSX. And now we can delete this. And I thought that was really cool and I wanted to share. So now that we're happy with what the button looks like, uh, let's head up to the properties panel again. We'll click on this button, select it, and we'll add an interaction. So once we click this interaction, we can add a new one. So we want this button when it's clicked to do something. So the trigger will be click and conditions we don't have any right now. And the action, we want the dialogues 
open prop to change to true. Remember that open prop? So that's actually under here, um, more, come down to coded components and set property. Now here we'll get to select an element and we will select the dialog and we'll, the property is open and we'll set it to true because we want it to open when the button is clicked and then we'll add it. So now we've got the interaction set up one way and we'll set up a closing interaction from the dialog component. So we'll select the dialog component and before we add an interaction, we'll actually change this open to false because when the app loads, we don't want there to be the dialog showing. So we'll set it to false and we'll add an interaction. Now this time we have two trigger options. We've got backdrop click and close and these are pulled directly from MUI. So I'll choose backdrop click, which is when that translucent background is clicked. And again, we'll go to more and set property and we'll select the dialog and we'll change the open property to false because we want it to close. So now let's click this preview prototype to see what it looks like. Okay, and now we're here, we can click the button and we'll see that the dialog opens and then when we click outside of this dialog, it closes. So that is quite fun. Now, while we're still here in the prototype view, let's have a play of this rating component. Now this component is already packed with interactivity thanks to MUI. When we hover over the stars, the highlighted stars follow our movement. And when we click on a star and then move away, we can see that it's saved to state because the stars are still there. We've selected four and we've moved away, or we select two and we move away. So let's have a look at what component specific interactions the rating component comes with. So we'll close the prototype window and we'll select the ratings component with command click. Now the properties panel should fill up with a lot of props for the rating component. Now, if this seems like a lot, don't worry. Remember that you can hover over the prop names to see a short description, or you can hop straight to the MUI documentation if you need to. Something of note is this value prop right here. Now this determines the rating that's showing. So for example, if we enter three as a value, then three stars will be selected by default. So let's add an interaction to see what we can play with. So we'll select that and add an interaction. It looks like we have three options this time and we're interested in this last one, value. So this will trigger when the value of the rating component, which is how many stars are selected with that value prop, uh, when that changes. So we'll select that. Now let's say I want to show the dialogue component if someone gives a five star rating. It might be like, thanks for giving us a five star rating thing. Um, and we can actually use the conditions to do that. So we'll click on conditions and we're after the value of a property. So I'll actually just use this drop down. So we'll select the rating and the property that we're after is the value. So if the value equals a value, of five. So this is if someone clicks five stars and changes the value to five. So if the rating is five, then we want to show the dialogue. So we know how to do that. We'll set property and we'll target this invisible dialogue here and we'll set the open value to true. Okay. So that is done. Now let's view the prototype. Okay, now when we click on any rating that isn't five, it just behaves as normal. But when we click on five, the dialog component shows up as well, which is super cool. The card, button, dialog, and rating components are only four of the awesome offerings from MUI. And each of its components have so much to offer. This video was just an introduction to how props are handled using UX Pin Merge and how MUI components have special interactivities for us to play with. So be sure to refer to MUI's docs all the time if you're ever confused about a prop. And most importantly, play around with the components and the options as well. You'll be amazed by what you can discover if you just tinker. In the next video, we'll build our employee portal together using MUI components. I'll see you there.